everybody. Thanks for joining me today. It's Mark. With me today on my podcast is the owner and president of Fine Paints of Europe, John Leahy. Fine Paints of Europe is a really cool niche. And I wanted to get him on and share with you what they're doing. One of the things that I like about niche products is that they have the ability to add additional sales rather than other specialty products, which I would not necessarily call niche. They're really just taking volume from other places that you may have it in the store. And so with Five Paints Europe, they really have some very unusual products that are not going to be available anywhere else on your shelves. And so the people buying them are generally speaking, looking for them. And so I thought it was interesting. Still, many dealers that I speak to tell me that they're struggling to find paint. So this is a paint manufacturer. He has paint available. And so I thought it would be worthwhile to get him on. He does a good episode. I hope you enjoy it. Like, subscribe, follow. Brian, put my phone number up there. Shoot me a text. Let me know what it is that you want to see me cover. And we'll catch on the next episode. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. It's Mark. With me today on my podcast is John Leahy. John is the president of Fine Paints of Europe. John, how are you today? I'm doing great, Mark. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate the time. Uh, Tell me a little bit about your path that led to you're now the president and I guess the owner of Fine Paints of Europe, right? Correct. So it was really my father who kicked everything off. My family uh, stems from the wine industry, father running a a local winery here in New York State. And he was kind of semi-retired after my parents split up, uh, working for your father-in-law when you're no longer married, will do that. And uh, I actually know a paint dealer that that happened to. Very unusual (laughs) situation. I'm sure there's more than one. I'm sure there's more than one. Uh, But it was just when things were really kind of kicking off with like Perrier and all these uh, European products were getting introduced to the market more and more and more of something that would really differentiate himself. Anything that was sold here domestically in the United States. He, so he didn't originally decide on paint. He was looking for, you know, just something different. So he did a lot of traveling in Western Europe, looking for something uh, that would kind of fit the bill. He was walking in the Netherlands and he passed a, uh, a restaurant facade painted with high gloss oil. And he had never seen anything like it. And he literally just stopped by the shop and talked to the restaurant owner and said, you know, I'm an American and obviously, and but what's this on the front of your, your restaurant? And he just said, oh, that's what we call lac. Now it's not lacquer, but it has that lacquer like look. He actually bought a can of primer and bought a can of finish paint and high gloss oil, Coach Green, uh, one of our biggest selling colors, and brought it back and did his door in the Hudson Valley area region of uh, New York. So he did that door. And the only thing that people could talk about when they came to visit us was whether it's the UPS man, the FedEx guy, the mailman, it was what's up with the front door? And he spent a lot of time looking into it. And he saw, saw that uh, the Netherlands was really the quality leader when it comes to coatings throughout the world, right? That's why we have products in this country called Dutch Boy, Old Masters, Old Holland. You know, there's 20 or 30 differences, references to the Netherlands when it comes to paint here in the United States. And we could talk about that a little later. But And then he started doing a deeper dive. You know, he started looking into the, the cost of labor versus the material itself. So I was with my dad. I was in high school working for him. And we started out originally a brand called uh, Schroeder. So that was us. Yeah. That was the beginning. That was the, that was the beginning of Schroeder. It was owned by a man or a family uh, in the Netherlands. He had no heirs that were interested in taking on, frankly, a struggling paint company. The products were fantastic. Newer technologies were coming online that they didn't have available to them. They had a horrible tinting system, but the products themselves were fantastic. So uh, long story short, we transitioned to this company in the Netherlands called Vigenal, which is one of the largest family-owned operations in the Netherlands, a completely different product. But I was been with him the, the entire time from high school to college and then post-college. Cool. And then, um, you know, when every father starting a struggling business needs cheap labor or free, free labor, they call their, their, their children. My um, father did. 
Yep. He, uh, he didn't so start I started the business, clip- but he still he still <laughs> wanted the cheap labor. Yeah. <laughs> and so I started clipping cans, working in the warehouse, and then I started going on the road selling, which was something I actually really enjoyed. And, you know, you could have a major impact, a bigger impact in when you're actually selling than you are doing anything else. And that was really my forte. And that's what I really like to do. And so tell me a little bit, because I'm I'm a little confused. Are you guys making this product here in the United States? Are you importing this? How exactly is this working? No. So Fine Paints of Europe is the the company that imports these com- these coatings from the Netherlands. So gotcha. they are made, packaged, branded, everything in the Netherlands. So this is the real Dutch boy. And then we bring it into Vermont. And then it gets uh, shipped out throughout the United States or, frankly, North, uh, North America. Uh, we also have a, a part of our business where we ship direct. So if we don't have a retailer in your area, uh, we're like the Zappos of paint. You can call us an 800 number and uh, you can tell us exactly what you're painting. And our staff is ready, willing and able to help you get the paint you need, the colors you need and have it sent right to your front door of your home. Yeah. And so they're still making it over there. And so you're importing everything. How has that been for you the last 12 months or so? Because I know a lot of manufacturers are really struggling uh, with issues yeah. surrounding the supply chain. Yeah. So in the Netherlands is obviously a very small country and a huge percentage of the product that they actually sell from our manufacturer gets sent all over the world, whether it's Asia, some of the, the Dutch islands in the Caribbean, obviously us. So if they ever stopped manufacturing, I mean, they, they don't want that any more than I do, right? Because right. We're, all, we're all dead in the water at that point. So they never stop manufacturing. The issue has been for me is delays in shipping. You know, with those 120 container ships off the coast of California, guess what they don't have on the, in Europe are containers, specifically heated containers. So if I'm shipping latex paint, I can't have that freeze. So I need heated containers. So it's been a challenge. We just got two containers last week, which I was, I was out of the products that just came in. Yeah. So I'm finding myself running out and frankly, having a hard time catching up to yeah. hit that, that neutral point where we all want to be, you know, not too much, not too little. If it makes you feel any better, the manufacturers that I know who are actually making paint here in the United States, they're they're having the exact same problems as as you guys are getting paint in. And so how much longer do you think you'll be dealing with issues like that, John? Do you think like we're getting to the end of this for you guys or are you still struggling? For well, I'd love I can't really speak to everybody else, but for us, we are approaching the end of it. I have nine containers coming to me probably in the next four or five months. So I just said, we can't, we can't have these issues entering early spring. So we're loaded for bear. Now I have to pay for that (laughs) probably sooner than I want to, but I have got to get this behind me. Um, So we're loading up on loads um, in an effort to do that. And so you guys are really in a cool niche and I'm an advocate for niche products as well as niche uh, retailers. I thought of myself as a niche retailer in New York. So why don't you tell me what it is, where in the market that you guys see yourselves? Well, uh, we like to see ourselves as a, as a, as a, a true partner to our retailers. You know, we, we go the opposite direction of so many of the domestic paint manufacturers doing right now. They're, um, they're flooding the market. They're dealers where they used to have maybe 20 or 30 minute drive to get to a a dealer. Uh, Now more and more dealers have these lines and I don't want to do that. Uh, I want to pick the dealer that we really want. Oftentimes we'll wait to have that dealer join us if they're not quite ready. Then if we know they're who we really want, we'll wait. And then just phenomenal margins on our product. Uh, I mean, there is no... There's no more lucrative line in the country to sell more than ours. And so, so we protect our dealers, make them very cash positive. So we really want to give people a reason to sell and promote fine paints. And so give me an understanding of who it is that, what kind of dealer 
is a good candidate to uh, consider fine paints to Europe. 99% of our dealers are Benjamin Moore dealers. We look for dealers that have been, you know, have a strong background. They really know paint and they, they do something differently. Maybe they can tint and stain lacquers really well. You, you know, they're doing something different. I think a lot of these dealers are be becoming more specialized. They're really aiming towards the high-end paint applicator as well as the homeowner. And so, and obviously that's smart considering the margin, right? Yeah. Because they don't want to just sell to the professional where they have lower margins. Uh, so they may have stores that ha are more geared towards the contractor, and then they'll have stores that are more geared toward the, toward the homeowner. And one of the things that I think the dealers that I've spoken to that have your line that I talked to just as prep for, you know, this conversation, they really talked about things like differentiation and how your product was able to do that. Uh, how do you think uh, Fine Paints of Europe makes a dealer stand out in the marketplace? You know, we work on those relationships. They don't happen overnight. I think that they know that, you know, I'm the one guy that they can rely on that isn't going to open a store you know, a mile and a half down from them. And in sometimes that's hurt, right? You know, I've had great dealers that have wanted my line. And I, I'll just say, you know, I want to be that one guy in the industry that actually does what I say I'm going to do. You, you know, when Fine Paints is owned, not by a, a huge venture capital group, these guys have my number. Right, <laughs> right, right. You know, uh, you know, so it's, it's, you know, it, it, it levels the playing field and that's fine. I want them to keep me honest. Um, but I, I want, I want them to know that we're, we're here for them. And, you know, when a dealer does bring in fine paints, I don't want them a year from now to think, yeah, it was a smart move. I want them to think that was one of the best damn business decisions I've ever made is bringing in that brand of paint. Leahy does what he says he's going to do. Let's talk a little bit about the products itself, because uh, I think that that's, for me, that's what I'm referring to uh, yep. when I talk about differentiation, right? You guys right. Uh, feel like you have a product that, or at least your dealers that I spoke to, a uh, prepper for this episode, they feel like they have a product that is not available, you know, elsewhere, basically, that there really okay. is a, a little niche that uh, there really is very limited uh, competition for. Is that is that your intention or is that just what your local dealers have shared? No, I mean, these products are legitimately different. You know, when yeah. I bring in a product, like say a, a newer product that we have, uh, our wall paint, for instance, you know, I, I changed the size and we invested heavily into wall paint and then I'll send, um, you know, those products to get te tested. You know, I want them to see how they stack up against domestic paint manufacturers. So I will send it down to people like Dan Marshall at Marshall Labs in Clearwater, Florida. And I want him to torture test the products. And when I do that and I talk to him, I said, Dan, what do you think? And he'll start laughing and he'll say, yeah, there's nothing here domestically close to this. And that's what I need to hear because I need to be able to look my dealers in the eye and my contractors in the eye and be able to say, these are the best paints available anywhere in the world, period. And I'm the only manufacturer that I know of that's willing to share those test results with anyone that asks for them. And it's interesting to me because I'm just learning here talking to you that you guys sell broad wall products as well. I really thought of you as really mm -hmm. niche. Like basically, I was under the impression uh, leading up to our, our conversation now that you guys were really just trim paints. And is it is that not the case? Are you guys doing broad walls as well? Absolutely. You know, one thing you have to realize, Mark, in our industry is you sell five gallons of wall and ceiling to every one of trim. Right. Now, if you're me, would you rather be the five or the one? And I'd, well, I'm a pig. I'd rather have both. In reality, if Fine Paints is going to grow, if Fine Paints is going to be around in 20 and 30 years, and I, I do want to grow and I do want to be around, uh, it's got to be with lower VOC, environmentally friendly coatings for the walls. And then we also have, you know, the, the oil-based paints that people are wanting to have. So I have the best wall paint in the world. And those and are latexes. Those are, those are traditional acrylics. I understand what you're saying, that they're yep. uber premium quality, but they're water-based paints. 100% acrylics. That's correct. Yep. We have the only washable flat in existence, the washable scrubbable flat. Nobody has that anywhere, including Europe. 
And uh, we also have for trim uh, our water thinnable alkyd, which is basically very similar to like the Benjamin Moore's advanced product. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically that's where this whole industry is going, you know, water thinnable alkyds. And what's been great is, you know, our product that we call referred to as eco, that product is now pushing 40 years old in the Netherlands. Very good. And that's yeah. uh, uh, an environmentally friendly broad wall. Is yep. that what you're saying? Yep. Nice. Uh, that, well, that's a trim paint for, for in, when they don't want to use oil, they have a substitute, a uh, water thinnable alkyd. And then on walls, we have 100% acrylic in a mat and a flat. I got you. And if you're listening, you may be wondering what type of products Fine Paints of Europe is making and importing that we're talking about here. Take a look at the ceiling over John's head. And I noticed it right away uh, when, when we got on the call immediately. You know, he's got his ceiling painted in, and I'm guessing an oil-based high gloss or some sort of uh, super high gloss enamel. Yeah. Yeah, that's, our, uh, that's what we refer to as our gateway drug, which is our high gloss oil. And that was the product that first brought you to my attention as a dealer in New York City. And I'm talking, you know, 20, 30 years ago, that was the Schroeder product that you're talking yeah, about. That was, was that, that was the high gloss enamel that painters started walking into my stores asking about. So that's where people learn about fine paints for the first time. You know, say you're like, oh, what is this fine paint stuff? What, well, what are they doing now? They're going on social media. They're going to Instagram. They're going to Facebook. They're going to Pinterest, House. Uh, they're going to something and they're typing in fine paints and then this is this type of thing that they're going to see and right. then from there then they try our water thinnable alkyds or the acrylics on walls so this is what they're using first and then they start experimenting down the line and so you mentioned social media that was one of the things that i had wanted to discuss with you today what are you guys doing to support your brand and your dealers as far as social media is concerned i mean we Social media has been the best thing that's ever happened to Fine Paints. Yeah. Niche brands online, that's that's the combination right there. But it's not just that. Then with, with Facebook, you have all of these very high-end painters that know each other virtually. They may belong to a Facebook group that you have to be a high-end painter to join. And then they're, they're going to look and see, like, what's John Shear using? What's ZK Painting using? What's uh, Da Vinci using? And they're all using my product. And now a high-end painter in San Diego can talk to a high-end painter in Seattle or Chicago or Florida, and they have these relationships with these people. And, you know, what type of uh, spray gun are you using? What kind of floor protection are you using? What type of clean air machine are you using? You know, and all of these high-end painters are, are using, you know, fine paints as a product because you're only as good as the paint that you apply, right? You know, right. you can't get a $45 can of paint to look like, a hundred dollar can of paint. It just doesn't work that way. So they have all of their skills, their abilities, their equipment. Now you're, you know, combining that with a level of product that is germane to where they should be. And that's, you're ending up with a very different level of product. And, and on social media, that really is playing well for you. That's the experience you're having. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, we promote our painters, you know, if they have a big job that they've done and they want to show us pictures, we'll, you know, hashtag the designer, the painter, you know, when, whenever we do advertising in magazines, we'll always have the painter that did that job in the, in the ad. You know, why, why wouldn't you do that? Why would you right. not support the painters? Right. Um, so we have, you know, an army of the best painters in the country, if not the world using our product. And I want to, I want to support them the way they've supported us. Good. So, John, I was on your website and, and I noticed that you guys keep a list of certified painters. What is that? So, in the very beginning, my father always loved the idea. We, we had these really uh, high-end contractors starting to buy the product and use the product and be our spokesman and be our advocate of, for the product. So, they were acting as kind of salespeople when we didn't have any salespeople, right? So, my father thought, wouldn't it be a great idea if we could find a way to drive business to these certified painters um, and show them our level of support to them. And so we started doing that about 14 years ago and we do it every once a year, every year. And these painters come to Vermont, they come to the Woodstock Inn for a weekend. And then, so we bring in- That's where you're headquartered. 
That's, That's correct. Woodstock, okay. Woodstock, Vermont. Yes. And then so we'll bring in this new group of painters that are wanting to become certified. And we'll also bring in returning certified painters. So when I was re- referring to before, you know, when I have, you know, John Shear or ZK or Mike Foley or, you know, some of these guys that are all over the Internet using the product, they're, these new guys are coming to meet them. They're not coming to meet me. Right. I'm trying to do my job and brainwashing them as to the why. That's the use of influencers, right? I mean, in the in the end, that's the world is becoming one that is all about who you know and, and who supports right. you online and stuff like that. And so that's really, even though it's in your warehouse and not online, it's really just another use of influencers. Good for you guys. That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a great symbiotic relationship, you know, and one of them, gave me a shout out last week. Um, You know, he landed a hundred thousand dollar paint job off of our website. Wow. Obviously he's going to use our paint for that job, but on the next job, whose paint do you think he's going to use? That's right. He owes you a favor. Who's buttering my bread. The high end painting world is a very small one. All of these guys know each other. If not personally, they know them by reputation and they all want to be the next John Shear, Chris Polidoro or the right. And, um, Every day, there's a new younger flock of painters coming in that want to do high-end work uh, because that's where the money is. That's where the money is. Yeah, exactly. You know, some of these guys are getting paid four, five, six, eight thousand dollars to paint a door. Yeah, to paint a door. Yeah, it's amazing, (laughs) right? It's amazing. And 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 so that's the same thing. That's the same thing, really, as as we're talking to dealers here. That's a niche. And if if you can find a way to make money painting one door, make money painting one door. Who says that you have to go roll on 50 gallons to make your, you know, your thousand bucks? If you can find somebody who'll pay you a thousand bucks for putting this court on, go ahead and do it. Right. And then what happens is, Mark, is the homeowner now sees that front door, they'll see the garage doors or see the kitchen cabinets. And then it transforms into, well, you didn't tell me it was going to look like this. Now I want you to give me a price to do my whole house. Right. Now I want you to give me a price to do my second home or my third home. Right? So it's not just the job you're on. It's the the next and the next and the next. So, you know, nothing succeeds like success. And And so what these- are you what are you doing at that you said a week I think. What are you doing in that week with the painters up in Woodstock? So it's a long weekend. It's Friday through Sunday. So Friday, I spend most of my time with, uh, so dealers can actually come. And on Friday, we talk about things that we're not going to talk about on Saturday. On Saturday, those retailers are still in the same room on Saturday. So we talk about why do the best painters use fine paints? How are you going to leverage this brand into making more money and getting new jobs and getting better jobs and more profitable jobs? How many dealers we'll do talk. you have come to that, John? That's really interesting to me that you do that. Yeah. So any new dealer that we get will often get the first invite to come. Yep. So say we're going to set up a six or eight new dealers this year. We'll obviously yep. invite them to come. And that that's the best thing that's ever happened to us. And that only started four or five years ago. Uh, Walter McDermott of uh, in Greenwich, Connecticut said, I know Walter. you know, you know, Walter Jr. is coming into the business. He knows nothing about fine paints. Would you mind if he came to certification? So I said, well, it's a, a neat idea. Let's see what happens. Well, Mark, it was the best thing that we ever did, have ever done. He came back. He was excited about the brand. He knew it intimately. And all of a sudden, our sales at McDermott Paint were going through the roof. And then the following year, he sent his other son. And then I invite, invited four or five other new dealers to come. And that's what we do every year. We invite new dealers to come to see, because now that dealer is in the same room with painters that use it, painters that are about to be certified, and they're hearing all this crosstalk and they're going to themselves, oh my gosh. If if you're a paint dealer, uh, in, in my opinion, the best opportunity you'll get to improve your business is to have an intimate conversation about improving your business with another paint dealer right? Yep. Because anybody who thinks that they've got all the answers, they're just kidding themselves. I don't care if you have a thousand stores and you're doing a billion dollars, you don't have all the answers, right? right? And 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 so I found in my experience, I actually just wrote recently 
how important it always was for me as a dealer and now even just doing this work to, a tra to attend trade shows every year. I was writing about the National Hardware Show at the time. And for that reason, it's, it's really to be able to, to run into other dealers and say, what is it that you're doing that's going well? And even more so, if you got somebody who's willing to talk to you, hey, this is something I'm doing that's going poorly. How can I improve it? And so I, I love that you guys are doing that. I think that's fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, it's been one of the best things that that's that we have ever done is starting invite not only the painter but the retailer in and they go home and they just know the line cold and they yep. see what the how these guys are operating and how they're applying it, uh what what equipment they're using to apply it, what spray gun, what size tip, what brush, you know, whatever. And um they're taking all that institutional knowledge home from the one half of 1% painter, right? They're taking that gospel home and it tur turns into sales very quickly. Do painters need special training uh, to, to put on your products? A absolutely not. There is a learning curve to every different product. Whether, you know, if you were a big P&L guy back in the day and now you're going to Benjamin Moore or, or vice versa, there's yeah. going to be a learning curve for, for those things. M my line is no different. If you're taking a painter that has never used or hasn't used an oil-based paint, coating in 15 years and you hand them a can of Holland Lack Brilliant, they may struggle. I will always ask them, when is the last time you used an oil? Oh, I haven't used an oil in 10 years. Well, that's the problem. It's not my paint's hard. It's just you haven't touched an oil-based coating in 15 years. And um, so they feel so very different on the brush is what you're saying. They do. Yeah. The, the, oil, the oils do. The acrylics, no. The hybrids, no. They're very similar to anything made domestically. But if you're going to start doing high gloss ceilings, you know, you want to do the SS minnow before you do the QE2. And you want to make sure you have it down because these coatings are much thinner. They don't go on as heavy. Uh, so you want to put it, put down a thinner coating of paint. Uh, if you put them on like you do a domestic, you're going to come back from lunch and the paint's going to be on the floor. It's gravity. You put on too much product. What about training in the stores? Do you think that any store can just take your product, put it on the shelf and you're ready to go? Or do you guys find yourself wanting to come in and train the staff to make no, the sales No, we, we do a lot. Yeah, we do a lot of training when we set up a new dealer. You know, I have a, a sales team that they'll spend, you know, three and four days. Actually, we're one of them is setting up a brand new store right now in Greensboro. And he'll sp spend the rest of the week there uh, going over tinting, how to sell it, what's different about it really wanting to sell the wall paint, not just trim paint. You know, you want to sell the whole the whole package to really take advantage of what's different about the brand. Yeah. You know, one of the things I like about this line, I was not a fine paints of Europe uh, dealer, just for anybody who was uh, wondering. I had two stores in the Bronx. We were not a super premium dealer. Probably if I had called you, I, I don't even know that we would have been the sort of dealer that you were looking for. But one of the things that I really love about the idea of this line is that it's really added, it's likely to be added business, right? It's likely to be added margin. You're not going to find somebody that's going to switch from an existing product to this. You're, you're going to find the people that are looking for super premium products for doors or cabinets or something like that. And, and that's what I like about this is that it really has the opportunity to add sales to a dealer that puts it on, no? A hundred percent. I mean, that's why we're growing and that's why we're frankly still in business. You know, if, yeah. if my product was as similar like every other domestic, you know, what's separating that dealer with anything? They're, you know, they're not, you know, they, they, right. so it needs to be different. And, and it is. Uh, so that's no, why a, we do have such uh, loyalty with our brand is because it does look different. It feels different. Yeah. It lasts longer. And that's something that they want. And, you know, we'll, we'll have clients in areas where we don't have a lot of dealers. We'll drive hours to get it. Hours. Tell me about your relationship with the design community and architects. Is that uh, something that you guys do well in? Are you pursuing that? We are not good at it. Uh, and that, that I falls appreciate on me. that honesty, by the way. Most people would tell me to cut that question out. And so I appreciate yeah. that you answered that. I mean, we are just, frankly, I don't have the time. I don't have the manpower to go after them the way that they need to go be gone after. Yeah. So I'm um, frankly, 
trying to rely on social media to do that. So when they do a deep dive into fine paints, they're not a deep dive. They can just Google it and they're going to see photos and then they're going to see names of architects and designers that are currently using our product and be like, oh, well, if it's good enough for this designer, uh, maybe I should take a look at it. But I don't have the infrastructure, the manpower to go and call on, you know, hundreds of thousands of you know designers throughout the United States. I have to pick my battles and that's just not one I can I can pick. Right. Well, here's the thing is you're in a niche. And so you need to behave like a niche player. And and so that means yep. that not everything is going to be available to you. You said before you get a little greedy. You you do I want the do I want to sell the five or the single? And and you said you want to sell all six, but in reality, what you really want to sell is you want to make sure to sell that mirrored ceiling, right? You want to make sure to sell that super premium trim paint that you guys are making because that's your niche. Yeah. I mean, that's like I said, I mean, that's our gateway, right? Yeah. So that designer is going to go to Instagram. They're going to type in fine paints and they're going to see jobs done by the, the highest of the high designers in the country. And, you know, if you're a designer, you don't want your work to look the same as every other designers. And paint is a huge part of that. And so now if they can look at a coding and be like, wow, this is truly different. You know, it's a win-win for both, both us, the painter and the designer. And, and for dealers along those same lines, you know, designers like to recommend products that will make their job stand out to their customers. Uh, dealers, you want to have products uh, on hand that are unique in the same way that that designer picked a unique product. And so that's yeah. why I like niche products and always thought, uh, I always actually considered your brand, just never was, like I said, uh, quite the fit for me. Sure. No, I, I get that. Well, that is a uh, really great way to end it, John. John Leahy, yeah. the president and owner of uh, Fine Paints Europe. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate the time. No, it was fun, Mark. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for inviting me.